Hello, I'm Demis Helen, and this is the final episode of my three-part series for Cubase 14, and we're going to be taking a look at the modulators. Okay, so we've removed all of the modulators here for each track. We've just got blank templates for our modulators. So I'm going to show you a couple of different modulators and how these work. I'm going to start with the group channel for these two bases, and we're going to create what I call sidechain simulation. It's the easiest way to describe it to you. If you was using a compressor to create the ducking effect, this can just be done with a shaper attached to a volume control. So usually the way that I do this is I'd use the effects modulator, create the shape, set it to quarter notes so it sounds like the kick is cutting off the bass and you get that pumping effect. And I can intensify this just by bringing this down. And there we are. So if you want to use that way, you can do, but I'm going to guarantee you that effects modulators are much quicker and much easier to use and you have a few more options. So I'm going to turn off the effects modulator there. You can see underneath it I've got a volume plugin. So this is here to be controlled to create the same effect. So I've just left that there. That's not doing anything at the moment. It's just sat at zero. In fact, let's make sure it's sat at zero. So I'm going to load in the shaper modulator and you can see here on the left hand side we have our shape designer so we can choose as many points, get as intricate as we want and you can see here in this pane it will show you what it's doing to the parameter. We have some controls down here so we have our time base so this is locked to the tempo so we've got quarter notes, half notes, sixteenths, eighths, all that stuff. We've got the phase position, so where it's going to start in this pattern. So if we put it to, say, 180, it's going to start in the middle as opposed to the beginning and such. And we can also turn this to frequency, so we can just control it in hertz. So we've got a very smooth transition between the speeds rather than time bases. So we're going to leave it in time base, but I'm going to load in my preset, transbase 1. You can see that is my volume shaper and you can see exactly what it's doing there. So every time the kick hits, it's going to duck the bass and it's going to make it sound like it's pumping like um, sidechain compression. So here we've got to attach it to a parameter. At the moment it's doing nothing. And then all we have to do is click a destination. So we can jump into this menu and we can go to inserts, number three, volume, and then we can choose gain. But the quicker way of doing this, and I'll just put this here for the visual, is the learn is already selected. Just click the parameter and it will just start modulating it straight away. And we can have the same controls. We can make it more intense. We can have it more transparent. And we also have the option to set this to unipolar. So this is currently in bipolar, so it's actually operating both directions of the center point of the control. But this gives it a better effect for me. But if you want to switch it, you can just click here. So I'm just going to make this a bit more intense. And let's see how that sounds with the rest of it. So let's jump into base number 11. I'm going to show you how to use the step modulator or an idea that I use the step modulator for. So let's solo off base number 11. And what I'm going to do is just bypass this side chain for now so we can hear exactly what this is doing. And this is a very familiar tool. The step modulator has been in Cubase for a long time, but in this capacity, it's much easier to use. And we can create some steps like this, but we can create them randomized like this, so we can see it's creating sort of like a sample and hold effect. And then we can attach these to various parameters within a synth. And this is what I've done with this one. So if we jump in here, we can see this is my instance of Spire. And what's happening with this bass is it relies on this cutoff position here for the envelope. So how much of this envelope opens the filter. So this is what it sounds like. I'm going to turn this down and I'm going to add a modulation source. I'm just going to click on there and now you can see it's modulating that straight away 
and I'm actually going to set it to unipolar so it's only going one direction. You can hear we get this nice randomized pattern on top of the actual MIDI notation. So you can add tons of depth and dynamic into basses just by simply doing that one quick step there with a the modulator. So I'm going to set this to 1 over 8, so it's just a bit slower than what the actual bass is operating at. So it's giving like a randomized effect, but it's obviously it's got a repeatable pattern in there. If we just jump into the MIDI pattern here, you can see that I am utilizing the velocities to create different levels of audio, so different volumes, and that gives it that driving force. You can do that here with the step modulator. So if we was to create the same thing, you can see the first note doesn't exist, and I can create a very similar pattern like this. So I'll just do this quickly here. So I'm just simulating what the MIDI is doing on the velocities. So you can set that up, you can save that as a preset and you've instantly got a workable moving driving base in there. Set this to 16 so it's moving at the same pace. And we can intensify that if we want to. Let's turn this down. So it's quite linear, it has a very predictable pattern. But with this on, it just gives it a little bit more movement because we've got two things working at once there. And you can automate many other parameters with that as well, but that works really well for me. So another use for the modulators is the LFOs for the transbase movement, and I'm going to show you a couple of macros as well because they are really handy for quick workflows having them at the bottom. So the LFO, I'm going to use this. You can see this is just operating on a sine wave, and it's currently set to half notes. So I'm just going to leave it half notes for a second. I'm going to open up the synth. I'm going to click Add Destination, and I'm going to choose this cutoff amount here. And you can see it's modulating there. Now, if we play this bass, you can see now we're getting sort of movement back and forth with that bass. And when you put that into the mix, We can make it less defined. You can see there for context. If we just turn this off. quite linear again and we can just add some movement in there just to give it a little bit more dynamic again this is bipolar if we put this to unipolar we can just have it operate in one direction but I like the idea of it just sweeping past that center line gives it a little bit more depth and at the same time we can jump in to the reverb here we can turn this off and let's just solo this out. And we can use this to add some reverb mix as well. So I'm gonna click another destination and the dry wet. And I'm gonna have this unipolar. like so, and then in the mix. Let's open this a bit more. Now I'm gonna show you some macro controls as well down here. So if we click macro knob, we can add this to some destinations. 
And let's just say we want to control the resonance. It's something that we're going to be using a lot of in the track. We can click this, click this, and now this will control the filter resonance. And we don't need to have the filter open. We can just close it up. And what's even better is we can automate these macro controls as well. And any of these controls, to be honest, by right clicking and adding to automation track. We can do it the old school way as well. We can use the automation lane. If you click more, you can jump into modulators, macro controls, and then macro knob, and then you can control it that way. But the quicker way, just right click, show macro control, and you can see here, we've got that there, and we can just draw this in. And we're not limited to just that. We can jump back into the synth here and we can choose a different destination. Let's say we want to control how much drive there is. In fact, let's do the amount of delay. So I'll click on there. So all in all, let's have a listen to how this sounds in the mix with our brand new modulators set up. So you can see there with a few more tweaks to the modulators, we've got a very nice sound going on there. We've got a lot of movement in the bass and all we've done is clicked on a few parameters and set them up using the modulators. So that brings us to the end of the video. Modulators by far is the most powerful feature in Cubase 14 in my opinion. It speeds up the workflow and it puts everything at the bottom of the screen which makes it super easy to control various parameters without having to dip and dive into different plugins and synths whilst you are producing. And with that said, thank you very much for watching and I'll look forward to seeing you in another series. Take care.